I got a story that I just saw about 22 minutes ago. Well, I'm going to say probably like 32 minutes ago or something like that right now. We have relatives of a missing teen believed, believing this under the belief that a registered sex offender harmed her. Huh? Huh? Y'all got the title? The relatives of a missing teen believe that a registered sex offender harmed her. She's still missing, though. But they believe that a registered sex offender has something to do with it, and he harmed her. He, like, did some to this baby. Just what the family is saying. Pay attention. Well, we begin tonight with loved ones of Nazia Harris, a missing Detroit teenager rallying to bring attention to her case. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for joining us for 7 News Detroit at 6. I think we did her story, right? Damn, they still ain't found. Naziria, Nazia. We damn it, they still ain't found it, baby. I'm Carolyn Clifford. And I'm Mike Duffy. Some family members believe a registered sex offender is behind her disappearance, yeah. and they say he's no stranger to the girl or her closest relatives. So the, 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 the registered sex offender is no stranger to the family and no stranger to the girl, a registered sex offender. Now, like we say a lot of times around here, just because you have been incarcerated, incarcerated, just because you have been found guilty, it don't always mean that's guilty, you know, but we gonna go with it because it's a registered sex offender who was, who was close with the family. But go ahead. How was this person close to the family? Come on. The News Detroit reporter Kimberly Craig spoke to some family members who gathered outside a Wayne County courthouse. Some of Desire Harris's loved ones say they have no doubt who was responsible for the teen being missing, a man who was no stranger to the family. Mm. I believe that this was about to come out. That this is her cousin. It says cousin, but y'all can't see it up there. He had an inappropriate relationship with Isaiah. So y'all saying that he had, ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh, y'all saying the registered sex offender had an inappropriate relationship. Did y'all just hear what I had done said? Because I repeated what she had done said. An inappropriate relationship. Not statutory and or great. She said relationship. He had an inappropriate relationship with Nazaya. Sexually assaulting. Sexually assaulting her. Oh, not sexually assaulted, but she said relationship. Huh? And yes, it does fall under sexual assault, but she started with sexual relationship. 13-year-old Naziah Harris was last seen four months ago getting off a school bus on Detroit's east side. And why would she believe that they had a relationship? And extensive searches by police have turned up nothing. Her family is fractured with some believing the boyfriend of a close relative did something to her. A boyfriend of a close relative. A boyfriend of a close relative. So that means he was in a relationship with a female. Child to T. Lee. For the, for, the, for the $2 super chat, he says she has moved and married a map in the start of the fam. That is a possibility. <laughs> Do you think he had been sexually abusing her? Yes. He's been in prison for being a child predator. So y'all think that he sexually abused her, and now you say because he's been to prison that this, this, this gives y'all the belief and or the evidence that he had to do something because he'd been to prison. Well, what he been to a prison? What he been to prison for? The 41-year-old man some of Naziah's relatives believe is responsible is a registered sex offender. He spent about 10 years in prison for sexually assaulting a child. Shut We're not naming him because he has not been charged in Naziah's case, but he had a close relationship with one of her relatives. Oh, oh, wait. So one of her relatives picked a... She picked a player who been down for 10 years, who's been down um for sexually abusing the child he been down for 10 years that's who her relative decided to have a relationship with go ahead yeah i believe that he did do something to her i believe he was involved two months after desire so but i got a question so all of you all knew that he was a registered sex offender before any of this right here happened nobody kept nazaria from around him seemingly disappeared a teenager went to detroit police to report that same man sexually assaulted her in 2015 when she was just seven years old well back it up back it up because i didn't catch the beginning go ahead uh, 
Two months after Nanzaya seemingly disappeared, a teenager went to Detroit police to report that same man sexually assaulted her in 2015 when she was just seven years old. So two months after Nazario was missing, somebody came forward from an incident in 2015. When I be trying, when, when she was seven years old, I, I, so she was seven years old, so I can't hold that against her for the seven year old possible sexual assault. I can't, no, 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 because she's, she's preteen. So we kind of let them there slide. But once you get like 12, which I ain't got no understanding, go ahead. Police investigated and last month prosecutors charged him with two counts of second degree criminal sexual conduct involving a minor. He remains in jail on those charges. Also, oh, he in jail right now because somebody else came for... Okay, all right, go ahead. What'd you say to that young lady right now? Thank you. And um, I'm right here with you. My heart goes out to you. After seeing Isaiah's story, they decided like, hey, like, we need to do something. One of so I want y'all to understand this right here. The girl came forward from an incident from 2017 when she was seven. So from 17, so, so oh no, no, from 2015. They said from 2015, right? I gotta back it up. I gotta back it up because I gotta be correct. I gotta be correct from I seemingly disappeared. A teenager went to Detroit police to report that same man sexually assaulted her in 2015 when she was just seven years old. 2015, seven years old. It's almost 10 years. So when she was seven, so she bought, so she bought 17 right now. Oh yeah, defended 17. Okay, so that means that her family decided to come forward. Her mama decided, okay, we can go and tell somebody now. <laughs> Decisions. Go ahead. Police investigated and last month prosecutors charged him with two counts of second degree criminal sexual conduct involving a minor. So you got to ask yourself, what did the daughter then tell the parent, the guardian and or the mother? Or did the daughter just not say something when when the young lady who was missing now went missing? That's a question that we got to ask. He remains in jail on those charges. Mm. What would you say to that young lady right now? Thank you. And um, I'm right here with you. My heart goes out to you. After seeing Isaiah's story, they decided like, hey, like, we need to do something. One of Isaiah's. Have you seen it happen to somebody else? Now, boy, y'all play too much. Go ahead. Relatives said just two years ago, she contacted Child Protective Services about the man after hearing he may have harmed some children during a sleepover in Macomb County. So somebody else contacted the police like two years ago because... They had the thought that he had done, done it to somebody else doing a sleepover. What? The children retracted their stories after being questioned by um, the adults in the, involved for hours on end into the, the next day. Then all of a sudden they said that the kids lied because he wouldn't give them money. The kids lied because they wouldn't give him money. So they saying that the kids came up with a whole story of being sexually assaulted and any of that right there, you know, because he would not give them. This is what they came up with. Did they know that he was a sexual offender? Did they know that he did 10 years? Well, or was it just lying on the man? That's a possibility too. But you mean to tell me, y'all didn't call the police? Y'all less family didn't call the police after, after y'all thought that he had done did something. All they hope now y'all let adults talk the kids out of some shit. God. Was to find Naziah as they wait to see if the man could be charged in her case. There's charges pending for other matters. We're grateful for that. We want to see justice happen for Naziah. In Detroit, Kimberly Craig, 7 News, Detroit. Y'all don't care about girls. You all don't care about girls. You all don't care about women. Y'all is full of B, of full of S. I don't know why I say... Oh, oh, because I was thinking about BS. But go ahead. The watch teenager it. went to Detroit police to report that same man sexually assaulted her in 2015 when she was just seven years old. Police investigated and last month prosecutors charged him with two counts of second degree criminal sexual conduct involving a minor. He remains in jail on those charges. What would you say to that young lady right now? Thank you. And um, I'm right here with you. My heart goes out. I don't. I don't be believing them words. I'm right here with you. My heart goes out. Y'all really don't care 
I'm, I, I'm, I'm sorry to say, I don't even know you people, but you people be lying. Y'all only act like y'all care when it's affecting y'all personally and y'all full of it. After seeing Isaiah's story, they decided like, hey, like, we need to do something. One of Isaiah's relatives said just two years ago, she contacted Child Protective Services about the man after hearing he may have harmed some children during a sleepover in Macomb County. The children retracted their stories after being questioned by um, the adults in the, involved for hours on it. But y'all contacted CPS. CPS went round there. Um, and that gave, that gave the adults a chance to question the children to have them retract the statements of what's going on. Y'all contacted CPS. CPS came round. So that means that CPS follow-up investigation was for them to talk to the kids and they were just like, okay, now we believe that the kids, they made it up. Somebody need to be fired. And into the, the next day, then all of a sudden they said that the kids lied because he wouldn't get no money. All they hope now is to find which, which the kids they could have lied. And Isaiah as they wait to see if the man could be charged in her case. There's charges pending for other matters. We're grateful for that. We want to see justice happen for Nazaya. In Detroit, Kimberly Craig, 7 News, Detroit. Decisions, decisions, decisions. That's why I preferenced it before I played the dog on sword to let y'all know where I stand. Y'all decision making, it affects other people more than it affects you all. The family member who was in relationship with a sex offender who did time for sex offending children for 10 years had that man around children in the family or or at least that child in the family. The other adult believed that they had a relationship, not just he sexually assaulted her. Yes, he sexually assaulted her, but she added on relationship. I just listened to the words, y'all. I just listened to the words. Moving right along. Y'all can tell me whatever y'all want to, but that's my belief. Y'all ain't got to believe me. That's my thought process. Moving right along.